darlings. It is the most glorious day today. The second of our promised heat wave days. So naturally I'm in an excellent mood. This morning started off with a Peloton ride. I actually woke up naturally at about five, came out and did a little bit of watering in the garden. Uh, we have lots of new bits that are freshly planted, so they always appreciate an early morning and water. Uh, then did a Peloton, and it's just been a very productive morning. I've made about 10,000 coffees for the Nicholsons guys and ladies that are working down um, planting everything up in the cut flower garden, and Kasia. Our cleaner is also here today. I have been on coffee making duties this morning. In 17 minutes, I'm heading to Soho Farmhouse for some meetings and also I have got my swimsuit in my bag as well. 17 minutes because I'm waiting for the towels to finish in the washing machine so I can stick them in the tumble dryer and stick our bed linen in. So I'm gonna go and collect up all the finished coffee cups and then head to the farmhouse. My outfit of the day is this little uh, jumpsuit from H&M that you guys might have seen at the end of, is it the last video? I think it's the last video <laughs> that you guys will have seen. Yes, my tanning routine and H&M haul video. It's a really lovely material. I almost feel like this fabric looks kind of like, I said in the H&M haul, it kind of looks like a Monet's garden kind of fabric and I love it. Cinched in with my Zimmerman belt and then I have got a Loewe basket bag with my makeup bag, my swing costume and my essentials for the day. just take a little look down the kitchen garden see what's growing I can compare the size of my <laughs> okay compare the size of my salad leaves to their salad leaves this is their cauliflower mine is currently this big so not doing quite so well there oh my goodness it's funny how different years you get different pests because last year I don't think we had to cover our cauliflowers they've got Sweet pea arches ready to go. See these, uh, what are these flowers called again? Are they not marigolds? No, but aren't these the good companion flowers? What are they called? They're not nasturtiums. Oh, they're not nasturtiums. No, no nasturtiums. Not nasturtiums. Yes, I'm actually going to plant them as soon as we get the new compost. Yeah. I'll be honest, it is interesting looking round, but it does make me grateful for our kitchen garden because all these beds have been way too close to This is Charlie's favourite fact. But yeah, we can't fit a wheelbarrow down here, can you? <laughs> <laughs> Bunny rabbits can get down I mean, there. It looks lovely, don't get me wrong. Yeah. But that's where, shout out, not an ad to Nicholson, to where we're getting the right advice. Because I think this was put in by builders as opposed to landscapers. Yes. Still but it's still working a treat. And sorry, how are their broad beans so massive? They must they, have overwintered them. They're on it all the time here, though, aren't yeah. they? Yeah. I mean, when you look at like. I can't wait till we're retired and we can spend all of our time oh, in the garden. Yeah. Chard look. Oh, I know. My chard never germinated properly. With the colours. Yeah. Shame, because I would have loved to have grown some chard. Maybe I'll see if I can get some seedlings. <laughs> Gazunti. I have just seen the biggest allium known to mankind. This is the biggest that I've ever seen in the past. And look at this. That is, in circumference, bigger than a football. That's like basketball sized. And the inside is like the size of a normal allium. And then they've got all of these little buds ready to come out. Um, probably in a few weeks time. No, it's a bit spidery, isn't it? There's something a bit creepy about them. tall enough either. I quite like them when they're taller. Yeah. Still. Flowers. Yes. Stunning. This is the same lavender we've had plants at home. Hitka. Yeah, of course it is. They're all the different varieties. Come to me. 
Hello again my darlings, back home and um, I'm about to take my laptop outside and do a little bit of work out on the outside table because it's just glorious today. I put some Vita Liberata tan, <laughs> it's a bit revealing isn't it, uh, tan on this morning and that's developing nicely so I'm just going to pop some SPF 30 cream on to sit outside. I did another very small, for me, H&M order because I wanted to order some more of... I didn't bring them upstairs. Um, I wanted to order some more of the green linen tea towels that I showed you at the end of the last video, which I'm using as napkins. And I also saw this little dress, which I just thought was absolutely gorgeous. I feel like it looks like... Um, what's that brand? Not Ola Johnson. I'll leave it on the screen here, but the colour um, and the fit I thought was really, really lovely. It's a little bit an annoying that these are not unclippable because I just love a strapless summer dress, but then I guess I could just tuck them in. But you know me, anything smocked, I'm a huge fan of. And then I also ordered, these potentially don't look that flattering, um, but I ordered a selection of linen bottoms because I have been really loving the sage, light coloured sage green pair of trousers that I've been gardening a lot in lately and I thought that this pair being a little bit darker would also be a great pair. Also just nice like to put on in the evenings when I just want to be relaxing around the house. So for today I'm going to leave this little bandeau style top on to do my gardening seeing as it is so warm outside but these are a kind of grey green colour which I think are perfect for gardening in. But then this is my original pair, I will leave all of them linked down below. Again just really comfy and cosy for wearing around the house, uh, great for doing my chores and just really you know easy to throw in the wash if I get a little bit of mud on them while gardening. And then the final piece of clothing in this order, it was just these pieces and the napkins. Uh, this is this little pair of linen shorts. I've obviously not uh, ironed these. I'm not going to because I'll probably end up getting them mucky <laughs> while I'm gardening this afternoon and they'll just go straight in the wash, but they're really, really comfortable. I had the have the white pair, which I got from H&M last year, and I thought I would add the linen pair to my collection. Really easy to slip on with the elasticated waistband, little pockets, and yeah, great for, I can't believe we're having a heat wave day in the end of May, but absolutely perfect for a day like today. I'm gonna pop a blouse over my shoulders, um, just because the gardening team are still here and this feels a little bit revealing but um, yes this is my outfit of the afternoon. I believe I've also had a net of delivery while I've been out so I will um, share that with you later on this afternoon as well. <laughs> not showing up quite as well on camera but the sunlight coming down through the tree through the walnut tree into the kitchen garden right now is just pure magic pure magic oh I was going to bring some secateurs to get some wildflower for my let's see if we've got any in the shed there we go so yes the walnut tree is just starting to come into leaf it's always quite late, the walnut tree. It always turns when our beach hedge starts to turn. Um, but anyway, I wanted to grab, I noticed a couple of bits of the wildflower had fallen over, probably because of this little boy. Um, but I'm going to just snip some of those bits and take them inside. Look at that sunlight for my little arrangement in the entrance hall. The 
certainly won't pretend it's the best flower arrangement in the whole world, um, but I've just kind of been adding to this over the last couple of days. It's the cow parsley that I got from the side of the road the other day, you'll have seen in the vlog. A couple of peonies which Charlie bought from the farmhouse and then the wildflower which I just picked from the garden. So a very nice um, collection of blooms. I'm going to probably make another one of these tomorrow just out of cow parsley inspired by the Dalesford one that I saw this morning. Um, but yeah, it's a lovely thing to have just as a bit of greenery as you enter the house. The cow parsley really is quite striking and I love how many of you have been tagging me in this in your Instagram stories as well. You've been recreating this at home. So please keep doing so because I love to see it. But anyway, now that that's done, it's time to resume our evening garden walk. So just like in my vegetable garden, when the flowers finish, in their place appears little fruit and I can't quite believe I'm saying this as a 30 year old but I've never seen a baby apple. <laughs> I've never seen an apple like growing and not being full size. I don't know why I just kind of presumed that suddenly they would ping and be there like a big full grown apple. Um, let me know if you have ever seen a baby apple before but obviously if you look, um, do you see that little thing there? I can't point because I've got um, my drink in my hand, but this right in the middle, that little purple bit, is a seriously baby apple. And then they get to about this big. They kind of look like crab apples at the moment. Yeah, you can see how that's going to become a fully grown apple one day. I don't know why, but this is just really fascinating to me. I've never seen an apple growing before, but Charlie just said that we will probably have to pick them before they get full size because the weight of all these apples, I mean there's so many and there's more to come. This is this tiny, tiny little bud here. You can see where the flowers have um, fallen off the end there and now almost at the base of where the flowers were, that is what's going to become a little apple. That's so amazing, but they'll get too heavy and weigh the tree down, so we will have to pick them before they get full size for a couple of years. This is probably the furthest one along, the roundest of my baby apples. Charlie's watering the trees, as you do. <laughs> now, I actually don't know what this is. Maybe they're green apples, but they could be cherries. This might have been a cherry blossom. Something else starting to grow here. I'm now just going around showing you all the baby fruit and we can come back in a month or so and see, see how they're developing. So this is my mature apple tree and it's a little bit further behind the babies. Whoops, here's a breeze. But looks like we're gonna have a lot of fruit on this one again. We all know that Charlie has many wins when it comes to his antique purchases, but Charlie has bought an old watering can. And uh, <laughs> would you like would you like to give us a demonstration? It has a nice little leak in the bottom, a nice hole, a couple of holes. Yeah. And then the reason I bought it is because we don't have one with a rose on. Mm -hmm. So for like this is just new turf here. <laughs> <laughs> Worst watering can. In Station Milo history of watering cans. Things, but I don't think I'll be buying a watering can from there again. Well, we'll just have to plant some flowers in it and use it as a prop. Yeah, we'll use it as a prop. Epic fail. This is not working how I'd hoped. Still want to do it though. Just finishing our garden walk and to finish the theme of showing you baby fruit, this is our new but obviously very old pear tree. We popped this in a few weeks ago. It's probably about 15 years old, I think if, it if might not more. Even be older than that. Yeah, the stem looks very. Yeah, uh, to be honest, I think it was the bargain of the garden. I do too. But anyway, <clears throat> looking at the um, baby fruit theme, these here are little baby pears. How cute is that? And they always grow in pairs. Ha ha. Hello, my darlings. I have just come inside after an hour of gardening. I decided not to film it this time because there's only so much gardening that I can show you until I bore your brains out. Um, so I'll tell you what I did though. I, if you remember in the last vlog, I put up the maypole. Well, I realized I didn't have a way of attaching the string on the maypole. I'll put a picture of a maypole up on the screen here. I didn't have a way of attaching the string into the soil. So I had to order some pegs from Amazon um, that I could like peg into the soil and tie the string around 
and essentially my climbing beans will climb up the strings of the maypole so I was uh, stringing my maypole <laughs> and I didn't think you guys needed a time lapse of that but yes it's looking amazing down there and we just had that gorgeous evening sunlight coming through and I can just envisage how magical it's going to be down there when we have a table and chairs and when we can have dinner down there can't wait but a lot of stuff has arrived today do i have a shopping problem yes i do <laughs> but it's also my job which just in my head justifies the actually ridiculous amount of shopping that i've been doing over the last couple of months in particular um as a little reminder this is not normal i love to share things with you here on my youtube channel shooting fashion content is my job and um wearing wearing lovely things within the vlogs technically i see this kind of outfit purchasing as my uniform <laughs> that's me trying really badly to justify another uh, shopping session so my goal with this order is to find a lovely outfit for the chelsea flower show we actually have a lot of things coming up in the diary over the next couple of weeks which require lovely outfits yes i've got some gorgeous ones in my wardrobe but I saw some beautiful new bits um, on Netta Porter. I know I only did a haul for them last week, but <laughs> it's that time of year where I love everything. Um, and yeah, we've got a lot of amazing events coming up over the next couple of weeks. I think I'm going to Chelsea Flower Show three days, or maybe two days. And I'm in London for maybe like four days over that week. We've got a restaurant opening in Windsor. Um, I've got a dinner with um, a brand. I've got a, I think it's like a seven course Michelin star lunch with a brand. Yeah, so lots of things going on that um, I'd like to have some fabulous outfits for. There's also some PR deliveries here, which maybe we could get started with. So we have got, this looks to be, oops, the new Soleil collection, which is the summer collection from Tom Ford, Soleil Brulon. This is one of my favorite summer fragrances. Tom Ford beauty products really are just another level of luxury. Oh my goodness, the, package, oh, the packaging is gorgeous. This is their summer Soleil packaging, the white and the gold. This is the most beautiful blush duo. How fabulously fresh and flattering that color is. And then this, I guess you could swirl across them both or just use one. I'm using Charlotte Tilbury Cheek to Chic at the moment, but I haven't switched my blush around in a long time. So Tom Ford may just tempt me away from my usual. Now I like the sound of this. How gorgeous is their external packaging? This is called their Glow Bronzer. I love the size of the Tom Ford bronzers. Oh, that looks lovely. And they're such natural tones there's no sparkle in them so they look really natural on your skin like you but with a hint of a tan now that again my charlotte tilbury one has just run out so i'm going to switch this in to be my everyday bronzer what's in the little pot they do the most amazing yes cream and powder eye color in the shade naked bronze that sounds very up my street so you can start off you can use your finger or a brush on the cream product and then the lid has got a super sparkly version so amazing for special occasions absolutely gorgeous product what do we have here lip blush so maybe you can use it for both and this is in the shade soleil i think this might be their sparkly lipstick yeah it's like a jelly lip balm with flakes of glitter in there absolutely stunning Okay, moving on. I feel like this box is glaring at us. And I let you know that I was purchasing these a couple of weeks ago, actually. Um, but they sat in my basket for a little while. I was really, <clears throat> excuse me, I was really thinking, do I need another pair of these shoes? But then I did end up sending the slip-on Valentino Rockstead shoes back. And it just left a rock stud shaped hole in my heart. So I did end up going for my, so the Valentino rock studs were actually my first ever designer shoe purchase. I bought my first ever pair, which I still have for my graduation because, um, and I graduated from the London College of Fashion, so I wanted a real fashion pair of shoes. Gosh, that, sh that shows how old. I graduated like 10, 11 years ago. 
um, that shows how great an investment these shoes are because the design has not changed in 11 years. Wow, I feel very, very old. <laughs> I joke with um, my friends that these are my running shoes because this style of shoe is so comfortable and I literally, I would, I'd be able to run, I'd say at least a mile in these shoes. I'd, I'd be quite confident in my abilities. Someone left a comment actually in the last video asking for comfortable high heel um, ideas. This would be my answer. So in case you hadn't guessed, it is the classic original Valentino rock stud in my current obsession, Raffia. I love them. I think these will be my, uh, what size did I get? 36 and a half. Um, I would say I fluctuate between the 36 and the 37, so this is perfect. I think these are fabulous. These are going to be my summer special occasion shoe of choice. Do I want to wear them all day at the Chelsea Flower Show? Yeah, I know, I know that they are that comfortable. I will probably actually wear the chunky block ones because you probably cover quite a lot of miles at the Chelsea Flower Show. I'm so excited for it. Um, need to probably forget my credit card because otherwise I could do some serious damage there. Um, but anyway, back to the shoes. So they are the classic Valentino Rockstud, tried and tested, the absolute favorite shoe of mine. Some people think that they are, you know, been and gone that they're not cool anymore. I don't care. You guys probably know by now that I don't really care so much about trends. I care about things that work well for my wardrobe, for my style, and these tick every single box. So a little close up, they've got the most beautiful, soft kind of tan, um, almost caramelly, oat milk latte kind of color leather on the heel and the bit which has got the rock studs, the fact that it's got this strapping keeps your foot so firmly in place, which is why they're so comfortable. The heel is not extortionately high, but this is like, these are my high heels. Like if I wanna wear heels, these are what I will wear. And this pair, as you can see, has got raffia on the toe. So as soon as I saw them on their supporter, I was like, yep, they need to be mine. Okay, second pair of shoes. Oh, a big black cloud has just come over, so I'm probably looking a bit blue. So, this will be my first ever uh, footwear acquisition from Givenchy. And I would say we're 50-50 as to whether I'm going to keep these or not, because they're kind of similar to my flat Valentino sandals. And I did, only in January, I had to go into all these invest finally in the Hermes, are they called the Oran sandals? You know, the ones that everyone on Instagram has. I did invest in those at the airport. So do I need, do you know what? I bet it's not even the blue, the gray sky that's giving me this color. It's black, it's having black in the camera. My skin against black expanses is just, <laughs> just not flattering on me. Anyway, oh, they're so nice. <gasps> oh, they're lovely. They are lovely. I have got a little bit of an obsession with raffia. I think um, that is well documented. So they are just a simple slip-on flat sandal with this raffia band going over the top of them, which I think is beautiful and literally just goes with everything. I need to remind myself how much they were but I do have two pairs of Valentino sandals, exactly the same silhouette as this, and the Hermes. Let me know down below what you think I should do. So onto a couple of uh, fairly random bits. I keep hearing people talking about Skims, which I am 95% sure is Kim Kardashian's underwear brand. And um, I saw they had it on their supporter, so I thought I would try a couple of basics, really basic bits. They are very soft, I must say. I've heard a lot of people talking about the Skims t-shirts, um, but I thought I would start with these. Nice, really easy to wear wireless brasiers. Super random <laughs> addition to my um, order. But these are the Bala one pound weights. Now, a couple of weeks ago, Elizabeth Arden did a PR send out 
where the heavier version, the pink ones, were included in the send out, which was really lovely of them. Uh, so you might have seen a few of your favourite influencers suddenly starting to talk about these and you might have wondered why everyone started talking about them at the same time. And that's because Elizabeth Arden very kindly um, sent them out. So we all received them at the same time. I started wearing the ankle version while doing my gardening. I think that's a really good idea, just a way of getting a little bit of extra toning in while you're pacing up and down the garden. And I thought, wouldn't it be good if I could also tone my arms while gardening as well? So I ordered, saw these on Netaporter. I just thought that the sage green ones would go with a lot of my outfits. And people might even think it's a bracelet because they're so cute. That could lit, ooh, yeah, that's, um, it's only a pound, but you know, if you're just going about your daily errands, even if you're cooking or doing your hair, just adds that little bit of weight to give you that little bit of uh, toning. So yes, I just need to keep in the habit of wearing them. So I might just leave them out on my dressing table and try to remember to put them on every time I'm gonna be active. Okay, this is something else that was sat in my basket for a little while. It's a very simple pair of pajamas, really nice and soft, uh, long white legs with a little bit of a lace trim down at the bottom. And I think we've got, do you know what? These are actually kind of boring. I think I'm gonna send these back. I don't know why, I think I thought they were a bit cuter. And um, they're just a bit simple. I'm probably gonna try them on and fall in love, but yeah, they just, I don't know. I thought they were gonna be a little bit special. We'll see, I'll give them a try. One of the reasons I came in here to do this unboxing was because I thought the light in this room was absolutely glorious, but um, it's looking like it might turn into a storm outside now. I've gone very blue. The rest of the items in my net porter order are all clothing, so I will do a little bit of a try on for you. Um, I'll just apologize in advance for the lighting, but if we spin around this way, we might be okay. Let's give it a go. Okay, dress number one, and this is from a brand that I'd not tried before. I think it's called Fil de Vie, and it's a really lovely linen material. Uh, again, I'm 50-50, so looking to you guys to let me know what you think, because I have a lot of white dresses, um, but I don't have any like this one. It, there's something a little bit kind of snow white about this dress. It's a really gorgeous silhouette. It's just very simple, um, very simple white linen in a gorgeous silhouette, which I love the simplicity of it. Love the bat wings, feel a bit like Angel Gabriel. <laughs> I love the bow that cinches you in around the waist. It doesn't have pockets actually, I kind of wish it did. It's one of those dresses, however, that I really wish they had put a zip in because it takes you a good like 10 minutes to get into it, especially the first time because you have to undo all of these buttons to get into it and then do them all up again once you're in. But it does look ultra lovely. And yeah, the silhouette is just absolutely gorgeous. I love a big full skirt. So if I tilt you down a little bit, you may be able to see that I have got the Valentino rock studs on and they are just absolute perfection. Even Charlie just came in and he was like, nice shoes. So definitely gonna be keeping Valentino rock studs. I'm falling more and more in love with, in particular, the skirt of this dress. It's got a really gorgeous movement to it. I think it's got a lot of fabric in the skirt and it's one of these brands which is not like crazy designer price point wise on Netta Porter. So yes, let me know what you guys think. I will number the outfits and um, you can provide me <laughs> with your commentary in the um, comments section down below. Dress number two, and is it me or is the neckline on this dress just absolutely ginormous? Maybe I'm, maybe I'm not quite wearing it properly. I just feel very like, <laughs> like the chest line, the chest area just feels very prominent. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but other than that, I mean, the fabric on this is absolutely gorgeous. I love the pattern. It's like a deep, um, kind of like moss green with this almost like a paisley pattern. Love this. Look, it is really like, it is very chesty. Definitely needs a belt. Probably my straw 
Zimmerman belt would look good with this. This is the one problem with not trying things on in my dressing room. I don't have access to all of my accessories. But you know what? I actually think I'm going to have to send this back because the neckline is bothering me too much. <laughs> well, this is an absolute winner. It is a totally classic... Is it a winner? Do you know what? Now that I'm seeing the top, I think it's a bit big, which mm, I think this is definitely worth me altering because it is just the most gorgeous silhouette. I love this low scooping back and yet it fits really beautifully around the waist. You have got these lovely pockets and just a very simple, elegant dress, the kind of dress that even in 50 years time, I'll be 80, even in 30 years time, I will still love to wear pieces like this. I think it is totally timeless. Uh, please accept my apologies that it is not steamed. But yeah, absolutely beautiful. I think what I need to do is take this to our tailor and see, um, I mean, that is just the easiest thing in the world to do. And I definitely think this dress is worth it. Just such a classic, gorgeous length. Again, it looks fabulous with the rock studs. Totally timeless. Definitely, yes, definitely a keeper. <laughs> Sorry, I'm back. I've just been fiddling around in the mirror. I think if I take an inch, and these are really easy things to do, an inch off the shoulders here, and then tighten the darts there so it fits me perfectly. I really do think it's worth it because it's just so gorgeous. Let me know what you guys would do. Do you think it's worth of the alterations? I do, I really do. I think it's one of those dresses that I will just take on holiday with me. You know, it could be a work dress as well, a day of meetings. The bodice is too big, but I'm willing to persevere. Guys, how am I supposed to stop buying? <laughs> these gorgeous dresses when there are just so many dresses that are so my style at the moment. You know how I can't resist a smocked bodice and a puffed sleeve and this dress is just absolutely gorgeous. So wearable, really lovely light material. It's got a very sweet little pattern on it. I don't think I've got anything with little blue flowers on it. When I first saw it I thought that kind of looks like a maternity, not like a postpartum outfit. <laughs> I mean, it would be a good postpartum outfit, but it feels quite like milk maidenly. <laughs> I don't know. It feels quite like cute and motherly, but in a really nice way. Very comfortable, very wearable. I'm wearing all of these without a bra, um, so hopefully you're not seeing anything on the big screen that I'm not seeing on the little screen. But never mind. Yeah, really lovely, really comfortable. I would love to just take this exact silhouette and cherry pick from all the fabrics in the world hmm because this silhouette is literally my absolute dream I've just realized it has got a little cincher in it around the waist as well um, but I don't think it needs it when you've got a smocked bodice and again I've got the Valentinos on I think we all know by now that I'm definitely keeping the Valentinos and it's just that really beautiful length possibly a bit casual for the Chelsea flower show People do get dressed up, especially for having a nice lunch there, but even if I don't wear it for the flower show, it's still a perfect one for my wardrobe. Okay, the lighting is really starting to make me look a little bit ill. <laughs> so I think I'm gonna stop doing a try on in a second because actually the dresses that I have just unpackaged are worthy of a proper, proper makeup, proper hair, proper lighting, and this room is not gonna do them justice. Uh, so I'll finish for now with this dress here, which is a real disappointment because I really wanted to love this dress. I love the brand, I love um, the pattern on it, the pattern is absolutely gorgeous, but there are three major things that are bugging me about this dress. Firstly, it's a really wonderful lightweight fabric, which is just absolutely gorgeous if you live somewhere really warm, but then the belt is really thick and it's just a weird contrast between this gorgeous lightweight dress um, I think it's, sorry I'm so blue, I look like a little, little schmurf. Um I think it's silk, really beautiful silk dress, but then a very thick, like, many layers to the belt. The belt itself I absolutely love, and it's got the most gorgeous scallop detail, um, absolutely love it. Second design detail flaw, it's only got one belt loop, and it's not on the side that I want it to be on. Like, I want to tuck my tail in here. 
and there's no belt loop there. So that's design flaw number two. And number three is that the shoulder straps are not adjustable. It would have been so easy for them to put like a bra strap style slider, but this is too low down. So even though it's literally five minutes with a needle and thread to um, pull your straps up, I just don't know why they didn't do that. It's a real shame because I actually don't feel very comfortable in this because um, of how, you know, again, open in this area it is. But look at this fabric. I don't know if you can see it a little bit better here. It's like a green kind of speckled, green kind of speckled fabric. I mean, it's the most beautiful pattern, it really is. And the belt is absolutely stunning. It's probably one where I'd wear the belt more than the actual dress. A real shame, but anyway, I'm really hungry and I do want to steam the other dresses in this order because they are spectacular and definitely worthy of me steaming and showing them properly, so we'll catch up on those a little bit later. Good evening, my darlings. I thought I would show you my evening skincare for both face, hands and feet. I'm watching Selling Sunset while Charlie's in the bath. So I already applied my Skin and Me about an hour ago. And now I have just put on, just before I go to bed, I've been using this for two or three weeks now. It's the Elizabeth Arden Advanced Ceramide Lift and Firm Night Cream. I just am very, very much enjoying this at the moment. It feels very soothing and hydrating on the skin, especially after using the Skin and Me. I believe this is their new peptide formula. It just feels very like it makes my skin relax. On the back of my hands, I've been using the La Mer Hand Serum. This is very expensive and I will be swapping over to my Beauty Pie Retinol Hand Cream when this runs out. I literally just put it on the backs of my hands. Um, on my feet, the Beauty Pie Footopia Softening Foot and Heel Cream. This is obviously the last thing that I apply so that I don't put foot cream on my face. don't want to do a Regina George. And then this is just a really lovely lip balm. Sorry, my camera's struggling in the low light. Um, really lovely lip balm from Amora Vixa. It's gorgeously thick and also just feels really, really soothing. So this is my kind of dream team in the evenings. Good morning, my, my darlings. It's now Wednesday morning. I'm heading into London today. So I didn't catch you up, so I didn't catch up with you properly last night. I was so proud of myself for not ordering a mac and cheese at Soho Farmhouse for lunch that I rewarded myself with mac and cheese <laughs> for dinner and that always just makes me very very tired so it was a very relaxed evening I showed you a little bit of my skincare routine so this morning I've been up for some reason since half past four I don't know why um, but at half past four this morning I decided to organize <laughs> my seed collection and I realised I had a few extra Cosmos seeds left over from last year. So I've just gone and sprinkled them um, on the border outside my greenhouse, greenhouse outside the greenhouse wall, and in the cut flower area, which is, as you saw yesterday in that very windy clip, now um, we do now have some blooms in there, which is very exciting. So hopefully they'll germinate and we'll have lots of Cosmos for cut flower picking later in the summer. So I'm heading to London in about 45 minutes, but I thought I would just finish off showing you the dresses that I didn't show you last night because the lighting went crazy. I've just been wearing this dress this morning and this is, you'll be pleased to know, a very affordable dress from Amazon. It comes in loads and loads of different, ooh, forgotten to, to do a button. It comes in loads of different colours but I just thought that this particular, oh I've forgotten to do two, <laughs> this particular shade of pink was really lovely. It's this kind of crinkly material, you've got a little fold up um, on the sleeves. I have unsurprisingly added my Zimmerman um, raffia belt, which is very nice and relaxed. Again just a really nice, like wearing it around the house, relaxed day dress. So this is what I've just been 
wearing this morning. Uh, so without further ado, let me share with you these last couple of bits from Netta Porter. I'll leave this as well as all the Netta Porter bits linked down below. Ooh, but before I get changed, because I feel like the Netta Porter dresses are too smart for the Givenchy sandals, I'm actually trying them with, can you see that? Not the best angle. I'm trying them with this dress here and I do absolutely, absolutely love how they look. It's a really nice kind of light raffia and they just look really relaxed, really beachy. Yeah, I am um, very, very happy with the Givenchy sandals. I haven't reminded myself of their cost yet, so I will just have a little double check, make sure they're not a crazy, crazy price, but I am very tempted to keep the Givenchy sandals. Okay, so yesterday I felt that I was very critical, um, but I still stand by everything that I said about the Everay dress, the one that I pulled out three different design flaws. Well, I am very pleased to report that Everay have totally redeemed themselves with this beauty. This is a very Josie dress indeed. It is actually a wrap style dress. It's the most gorgeous, um, kind of like a soft, off-white base colour with beautiful blooms. I can't quite figure out what they are. Maybe they almost look like larkspur. Um, in this lovely green and further creamy kind of pattern. It's got a little waist belt which is actually meant to be uh, fastened in like a typical belt style with this little loop here but as you can see I have just done my own thing and bought it around the waist with a little bow just to add to that feminine style. It's a maxi length, it looks fabulous with the Valentino rock studs, I thought I would continue trying those on. I kind of want to wear this dress today, it's perfect for the day that I've got today, I've got two, <laughs> two lovely lunches. I've got a meeting at Annabelle's which is a really gorgeous members club, I've actually never been aside from events at Annabelle's before so looking forward to that um, and a couple of other lovely meetings today but I think this is actually even more appropriate for the Chelsea Flower Show but then I have a couple of other bits which are also appropriate for the Chelsea Flower Show and I'm only going two days I have realised so um, that's only two outfits but yes this is absolutely gorgeous a really beautiful lightweight it's almost like a silk chiffon material really gorgeously lightweight by the way if you're wondering what is normally here it's my hydrangea i think i have killed my hydrangea by letting it get seriously dehydrated it's currently sat in the sink i'm trying to resuscitate it but we shall see um but yeah this is just absolutely stunning gorgeous this will be a really lovely wedding guest outfit but most definitely a winner for me for um lovely spring events and especially the chelsea flower show so this next outfit, it's actually just the skirt that we're focusing on. The skirt is from Amelia Wickstead, which is a brand which I just, I wish they weren't so expensive because I just adore all the Amelia Wickstead pieces. I can see why they are very expensive, but um, the prices are quite astronomical. However, I just saw this skirt, fell in love and absolutely had to try it. Not too sure um, what other kind of tops I could wear it with, maybe even just a simple linen shirt would be lovely. But for a special occasion, I have mixed it with this top, which I got last year from Luisa Via Roma. The skirt has just got the most gorgeous shape to it, the most gorgeous movement. It is a full skirted skirt, so it's got a huge amount of fabric, which gives it the most gorgeous, gorgeous shape to it. And it's almost, um, do you call it Swiss dot, this kind of material, which I absolutely love when it's got the raised little dots on it and then this gorgeous floral print. I must say I'm also very much loving the length of the skirt because it really shows off my footwear as well, once again still in the Valentinos. Um, it finishes at a really nice height or place on my waist, doesn't show my tummy button. Um, so yeah, it is absolutely gorgeous, but it really is <laughs> the most gorgeous skirt in the whole world. But can I justify this insane price? I mean, look at that. How magical. I just absolutely love it. I really do, but... If the high street <laughs> could please produce something just like this, I would be very grateful. I have another skirt to share with you. And this one is a colour that I don't normally go for, really, really vivid colours. 
So my brand's called Double J, and you've just got the most sensational floral pattern on here. Bright pink roses and dahlias all throughout, hydrangeas. Actually, no, I think it's all dahlias. Stunning. I feel like this would be a great hit at Chelsea Flower Show again. Um, I'm not sure about pairing it with this top though. Something about this outfit together with the off the shoulder, the freeness of the top, and then the colour of the skirt is giving me flamenco dancer <laughs> vibes. Maybe I can wear this on a trip to Spain, but yes, it, I love that it's elasticated on waistband, making it super comfortable, lovely silhouette. Um, I just think I need to try pairing it with a few different tops. Now I know you guys have seen me in this Rixo dress before in my last Netta Porter order. I actually need to go, <laughs> otherwise I'm going to miss my train for London. I have got two more dresses that I wanted to share with you though, so I'm going to skip to Josie of the future. I'm probably going to film those clips tomorrow morning, so it'll probably be quite dark by the time I get back later. Um, so let's go on a little time hop and then I'll catch up with you guys in London. <laughs> down Regent Street. I'm trying to walk everywhere between my meetings today. I've already made my first purchase in and other stories. We've got some lovely bits in at the moment. I'd like to try and pop in to Anthropology before my lunch meeting. See if they've got any nice little picnic beds. I have just come into the Dior store and I can't quite believe what I'm seeing. Dior have gardening utensils. This is the most incredible thing I've ever seen. I need to have a little look at this apron. I must say I do prefer the utensils that I got from Burford, but oh my goodness. I cannot believe my eyes. my darlings. I'm going to keep the camera facing this way because you know what my face looks like and I'm far too embarrassed to uh, flip the camera around and talk to it in central London these days. But today has just been so lovely. Just had a lovely lunch meeting at Annabelle's. I showed you the pink floral bathrooms which I still am so desperate to recreate in our house. They really are so stunning. Um, but yeah, it's just been a day of really good meetings so far and I have walked between every meeting. I've been wearing my chunky block heel Valentino rock studs. Yes, I did make a little purchase in Dior. I'll show you that when we get home later. I don't know what this place is here, but their logo is a sausage dog, so I feel like it's my kind of place. Um, but yes, I'm actually just walking up to my final appointment of the day now. I've got an hour until it starts, so plenty of time, and I'm walking the scenic route up South Audley Street, which is such a gorgeous street. Pretty sure I have <laughs> vlogged walking down this street before. Um, but I'm actually heading to the Waterhouse Clinic, and I'm going to have the Hydropresso treatment not such an attractive street now so maybe I will talk to you. Um, yes, heading to the Waterhouse Clinic up in Marlebone for a Hydropresso treatment. I had one before and it was amazing. My skin was so fantastic afterwards so I can't wait for that. You get the body treatment and the face treatment and I'm starting to feel a little bit congested all around here so I'm gonna ask if I can actually see the gunk <laughs> they pull from my skin afterwards so I feel like that will be very satisfying.
things. I wasn't planning on vlogging anything today, but I just wanted to end the vlog properly instead of on the time lapse at uh, Waterhouse Young last night. So if I look very tired <laughs> this morning, it's because I am. I slept awfully last night and my journey home from London yesterday was an absolute nightmare. Got to Marlebone, every train was cancelled, but also it took them like an hour to tell us that they weren't delayed, they were actually cancelled, so that was an hour down the drain. I then went over to Paddington, I missed the only direct train, and then all the ones with the change were cancelled. I think there was some signal failure, um, like a points failure or something. Eventually got a much longer train to a different train station, fairly near where we live, um, and then had to get my mum to come and collect me. <laughs> so yeah, it was, a, it was a challenging journey home. It's only on evenings like that that I'm like, oh, I wish I could just get in a taxi and get back to Clapham, which is where we used to live, which was like a 20 minute taxi from central London. But anyway, um, so I didn't want to end the vlog without showing you what I bought in London yesterday. Oh, and the facial was fantastic. <clears throat> I always find that my skin takes about 48 hours until it really gets the benefit of a facial. It kind of goes into shock and then it looks great. So don't judge my skin now, <laughs> judge it in the next vlog, although not the first day of the next vlog because I already pre-filmed that, which is a little bit confusing. Basically, um, I'm working with a brand who needed to preview the content like a week in advance, so the first day of the next vlog was filmed a few days ago. <laughs> Very confusing, I know. Anyway, um, the facial was fantastic. A Hydropresso treatment, as you saw, you're lying in this suit and it basically blasts like jets, kind of gently, of air on your body, helping with drainage. So it's amazing for your muscles, amazing to just get everything moving in your system. And then while that's going onto your body, you have the Hydrofacial, which is obviously cleanse, peel, extraction, LED light therapy, you get everything within a hydrofacial. I was gonna show you the tube of the gross water, but actually, luckily, my skin was fairly clean, so it wasn't really that dramatic. There was nothing too disgusting um, to show you, but it's a great treatment. It's not like one of these relaxing facials, but I really notice the difference that it makes to my skin. The team at Waterhouse Young have actually said that if you mention my name, or if there's a code I'll leave it on the screen here, then you can get a discount on that treatment, which is so kind of them. So yes, I'll leave all the information about Waterhouse Young in the description box down below. It's just off Marlebone High Street, between like Marlebone High Street and Harley Street, so great location. You can go shopping or have lunch before and afterwards. It's a lovely place to go. And they do loads of other kinds of treatments there as well, so have a little look on their website. So, before my lunch meeting, you will have seen me going into Dior and just absolutely losing my mind about the fact that they had gardening things. And this is typical Dior in that everything has a zero on the end of the price where it just really shouldn't. And yet suckers like me will still go and spend those prices. So, this is... I will confess right now, a ridiculous purchase, but it's one that will make me extremely happy when I'm doing the thing that I love most, which is gardening. So, um, I'd say let's do a proper little unbox with me, but <laughs> the bag and what's inside got a little bit drizzled on because it's a glorious day in London and then when I got back to um, Morton and Marsh train station, I had to use this bag as an umbrella. But anyway, we've got some lovely tissue paper. I'm not with it this morning. Tissue paper inside. This is my first purchase from an actual proper Dior boutique because I think it is anyway. My uh, coat was obviously from Vista. Your receipt comes in a little Dior envelope. And then we have the gardening apron. You guys will have seen me holding this up in the store and I just thought it was so fabulous. I'm never too sure how these things work. Uh, is it literally as easy as... Oh, maybe it's literally that easy. And here it is. It looks a little bit ridiculous over the top of the belt that I've got on my dress. 
um, but it's just so cute. This little gardening apron, it's got pockets in the front here that you can put, well to be honest I'll probably put my phone because I like to listen to podcasts when I'm gardening and this is the perfect space for it and probably my vlogging camera. And then the pattern on it, it does have a name this pattern but I can't remember what it is, just these lovely, they almost look like clover leaves, nasturtium maybe? really really cute and then they didn't have them in store but I did have a look on the website they have got the matching gardening gloves and yes it's just it is overpriced and ridiculous but I might treat myself to the gloves as well and I'll never wear them when I'm doing the dirty work but I just think it would be so ridiculously bougie. I can't help but think that the market of people that are willing to buy Dior gardening stuff must be quite small, like a small niche of people, unless there are more people like me <laughs> that wear fancy dresses when they're gardening. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we are. <laughs> A rare, unusual type of person. Anyway, I absolutely love it. Crazy expensive, but for the joy that this will bring me, worth every penny. And then this is one of the pieces that I bought from And Other Stories. It's actually got a little bit of a weird um, <clears throat> thing going on around the waist. If I take the belt off, you can see it's got these two drawstrings. So maybe it'd actually look better if I did it up properly. Actually, that does look kind of cute without the belt. It's, um, it cinches you in in a really nice way. And this pattern is just a really simple kind of ditzy green floral, which I just absolutely love. I know I have got far too many dresses <clears throat> in my summer wardrobe, spring summer wardrobe, but I, I do live in them <laughs> every single day. And I have got the, can you see them, Givenchy flat sandals on with them. I still haven't decided if I'm definitely going to keep the sandals. I'm just trying them on with loads of different outfits, but the dress I love. What else did I get from And Other Stories? Um, okay, this top I thought was quite cute, and remember the skirts that I showed you yesterday? I, th I thought this could potentially be a good top for styling with those skirts that have got um, a slightly more dramatic silhouette. And maybe it's too much volume, but I'll give that a try later, but you guys will see that in the next vlog. I do love a high street pair of sunglasses, especially uh, to keep in my handbag, to keep in the car, if I'm on a boat <laughs> or going on the beach, and I find this shape flattering on my face shape. They are very dirty. I saw this skirt, and I just love skirts like this. Really easy to pull on with an elasticated waistband. Definitely needs a steam, but I can imagine myself getting a lot of wear out of that. And then just a cute little pair of socks with a heart on them. Very, very sweet. So that's everything that I got in and other stories um, and everything that I bought in town yesterday. So I'm gonna end the vlog here, darlings, because I need to start <laughs> the next vlog, or actually, because of the weird timing, I'm actually going to be jumping straight into day two of the next vlog, which is a bit weird. I'm heading down to Soho Farmhouse, um, getting a pedicure, might go for a swim, the sun is coming out, and then I think I'm going to work from there for a little bit today. So darlings, I really hope you enjoyed, um, I really hope you enjoyed today's vlog. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!